Hello, hello, everyone. This is Kimberly and Kathy of Girls with Dogs. I am the blogger behind Keep the Tail Wagon. Kathy here is the blogger behind Groovy Golden Doodles. And this is our weekly chat about all things dogs. How you doing, Kathy? I think I'm good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Allergy season, allergy season, allergy season. I have allergies and it's only February 13th. That is unusual and means that it's the end times. So you know what you just sounded like? Hmm. You just sounded like Harley if he could talk. And that's why, <laughs> hence why we went to go pick up his medicine this morning because he says, allergy, allergies. I have allergies. <laughs> I have allergies. Yep, Rodrigo has season. his allergies. So you are giving um, Harley Apoquil. I am. And, you know, just be kind. If you don't like it, I, I respect your opinion, but please respect that Harley has been on Apoquil for... Uh, since 2015. And it has made a significant positive impact in his life. He is checked regularly. He has full panel blood workup. And so for all organs are working fine, but he has to have it. It's the only thing that works for him. And this is that time of year when we get into the latter part of February and we have all of that moisture mm -hmm. and dampness even though it's relatively warm in Charleston, our temperatures will go from 40 to 70, 38, 69 um, in one day. February and March is just, it's a struggle for him. Yeah. So he has it, to do it. The simple fact of the matter is, it's like we, when it comes to raising dogs, I was, I was, I've been interviewing people for National Raw Feeding Week, which is the first week of April. And um, one thing that has really stuck in my head is one, you know, it's not enough to just say we're going to, you know, quote unquote, raise our dogs naturally and, you know, feed our dogs better and do all these great choices for our dogs. We also have to include in that quality of life. So if you're doing everything perfectly natural, according to whomever is, is watching, um, mm -hmm. but your dog is absolutely miserable, you know, is that really worth it? And it's just like, that's where I honestly, and we talked about this last week, there has to be a balance the, you know, um, I was, I interviewed Dr. Judy Morgan and we talked about food energetics, you know, like warming and cooling proteins and such. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one thing that she said is that, you know, everyone is familiar, familiar with yin and yang, but they don't understand that we're not trying to be yin. We're not trying to be yang. We're trying to find a balance between the two. And what people don't understand, it's not about being like black or white. It's about living in that gray. And that's what we're supposed to be focusing on doing, living in the gray. And so that's what you are doing. And anyone who criticizes you for the choices that you've made for your dog is living in the black or the white. And it's just sort of like you are, when you live, when you go so far to one side, you limit yourself because you don't have access to all of the benefits of the other side. So we are great. We are gray, baby. And we're both wearing gray, by the way. That's so. right. We are gray. We are <laughs> and I, gray. And I have my, half my closet is gray. So I'm a little um, We are biased. living in gray. <laughs> we're living in gray. So I want to introduce our topic today. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. I'm okay. ready. Hola, Kimberly. Me oh. mudo a España. Oh, hola. Como estas? That's all I know. Oh. Um, <laughs> I said, hi, Kimberly, I'm moving to Spain. Oh, buen, or what is it, bueno? No, is that's bien, good. Bien? That's bien. Oh, bien, bien. Bien, bien. I um, guess, I don't know. I've, mm -hmm. I've lost my Spanish. Sorry, sorry to all the Spanish speaking individuals were, out there. Yeah, we were, we were trying. We were <laughs> trying. We were but, um, language. but side note, though, about mm -hmm. learning a language, I am researching all these various language apps uh -huh. because my daughter-in-law is French and German. Nice. Um, with she speaks heavy, both French and yes, German? Yes. Nice. French is probably the more dominant language mm -hmm. for her, um, you know, French and English. My grandson is two now. So he's learning both French and English. Oh, nice. So I've decided that I'm going to try these French speaking apps mm -hmm. in my spare time. Um, she's going to, at some point, stop speaking English to me over the phone so that I will actually be able to practice French. So when he grows up and he tries to cuss me out, I'm gonna know, <laughs> and I'll be able to cuss him out too. But um, well, anyway. wait, wait, 
one thing, if you find an app that you like, let me know because I want to get my Spanish back. And okay. So I would love okay. to do that. Absolutely. Okay. But we're so speaking of Spanish. Today, because January 5th of this year, a momentous thing happened in the realm of pet parenting. Okay. Spain passed a new law recognizing that your pets are now legal family members in Spain. And I think that that is incredible. It is. It is very, very incredible. So let's talk about what does that mean though? And um, how do you see that being a benefit for the United States? Yeah. Because you know, once things trend and start happening. Yeah, everyone uh, is worldwide. We're all watching this, hoping to see this change come through. The thing in the article that I read about it, the thing that stood out to me, um, because it, it first talked about when couples split up. So it's gonna be like, who keeps the dog? and and making, making that, um, a more legal thing that that's an important part of that conversation. You don't get to just give up the dog or, you know, the dog has to be considered. But the other thing was that, um, pets can no longer be abandoned, seized or mortgaged. And that I love, love, love. I don't really understand what it means though, when it says dogs can't be, or pets can't be mortgaged. And, um, when I think about, I don't, mortgage, you know, we have a house. So basically, um, in exchange for a loan or what uh, money you get property. And so is it saying that dogs can't be sold as property? And if that's well, the case, I'm curious to know how this is going to impact the dog breeding world. Well, it says here that let's, there's so much to unfold. Yeah. Um, my, oh my, how do we do it in such a short period of time? <laughs> <laughs> So here's what I, first of all, what I like is that they're recognizing that all animals are sentient beings. And earlier- Well, before it we, says pets. So we should probably animals. be clear that it says pets in this article, the legal change of pet status. Okay. So if you click on, and you're reading it from petguide.com. Uh -uh, I'm reading it from pinlive.com. Who um, got a quote about the abandonment <laughs> and stuff from Pet Guide. Um, oh, yes, yeah. we argue on the phone, um, everybody. <laughs> yeah. But oh, yeah. it says right. Spain will legally recognize all animals as sentient beings oh. with emotions rather than property, making sure that in an, any kind of a legal battle, the well-being of the pet is considered above all else. So what I like here is the fact that w they're even recognizing. So I had to ask Kimberly, what does sentient mean? And actually it means that they have feelings, they have a soul. So the fact that you have a country that is recognizing that dogs have emotions is huge. Yeah. How many times do we read these so-called articles from so-called um, experts that claim, you know, don't think your dog feels bad when, when yeah. something happens because- They don't feel has, guilt. Stop yes. humanizing your dog. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So that was the first thing that I thought was, just phenomenal but it just goes on to talk about how like you said the dog can't be abandoned seized or mortgaged um their feelings and happiness are taken into account and they approve so that the outcome is best possible for the pet and so it's just not a matter of straightforward legalities now here's what i didn't know Spain isn't the first country to pass this law. Oh. Yeah, check that out. So according to this article, Germany, Switzerland, Austria, France, and Portugal all have laws, laws in place that recognize animals as living sentient beings. Okay. okay. So I don't have to necessarily go to Spain. I just need to go to Europe. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, this is really interesting because another thing about Europe, and I don't know if this is all over Europe, but just in meeting people who, um, you know, on social media who are living in Europe, I remember like when the conversations of spaying and neutering came up, people would say that, oh, we don't spay and neuter our dogs over here and we don't have a homeless dog population. And the reason why is because we're more responsible about our animals over here. And I think um, personally, I also think that we in this country in America tend to monetize so many things mm -hmm. and because so many people are monetizing um, 
puppies, uh, that's why we have a homeless dog population. And I'm not blaming breeders. I'm blaming people who aren't being responsible, who aren't being about the breeding that they're doing. So whether it be um, <clears throat> backyard hobby breeders who may not really take the time to educate themselves about their animals and, you know, take the time to really choose the right homes, things like that, but also people who aren't taking care that their dogs, their unaltered dogs aren't going out and impregnating other dogs or becoming impregnated. So, I mean, it's, this is like kind of cool because, you know, we were talking about the whole, you know, what is it? The custody agreement or something like if we split up, I keep the dogs the conversation we've been meaning to have. for oh, a month. <laughs> and, and listen, in the short time that it was, since we talked about that, guess what I found out? Huh? The papers that are drawn up are actually called, are you ready? What? Pet, nu- pet nups. Oh. <laughs> like, no, I can't make this up. <laughs> pet nups. Okay. Um, it says more and more parents are turning to the law to clarify who gets the pets in case of a breakup. Yeah. Now I think lawyers it's important to do. Now lawyers have their hands full with what they call pet nups. And it was so funny because I always thought that it was what it was, was it was one of those where it was whoever was the primary caretaker of the dogs Mm -hmm. is who kept the dogs. Um, And yay, that's what, but that, yeah, that's not always, always went by that ruling. But see, here we are in the slow to move United States of America. Um, In the eyes of the law, pets are seen as property Mm -hmm. rather than actual children, which we know they're not children, but we do know that they're sentient beings. I like family members and they're family members. And, you know, to me, it's like when you take on, whether it be ownership or parenting, whatever you want term you want to use, when you take on adding a pet to your family, in my opinion, this is a lifelong commitment. And if you cannot make that commitment, I think it's on you to make sure that that animal lands in a safe place that's right for that animal, not just posting it on, you know, Craigslist and giving it to the first person who drives up to your driveway. Um, but you know, says, we take it. Yeah. But we you know have, what yeah. being considered property becomes an issue because you mentioned, and you always say this, um, something to the, the words of the effect of, I think that the dog or the pet should go to the person who is the primary caregiver. Mm -hmm. So, but imagine this scenario, okay? Um, Molly and Mark have a dog and the the primary caregiver taker of the dog is Molly, but Molly doesn't have a job and has never had a job. Mm -hmm. So when they split up, Mark is just out of nastiness asking for possession of the dog because Molly does not have any means of taking care of said dog. So I, so again, when it's considered property, it is no different than furniture, Mm -hmm. if you will, or a vehicle. Yeah. So um, I think that what we're seeing this trend now um, with all kinds of different states now considering dogs in divorce proceedings um, as family members, I think the first step is to get on the the bandwagon with these other countries that are recognizing and giving dogs um, almost better rights in the eyes of the law so that they can be considered um, for the breathing creatures that they are as opposed to a rug. Because to be honest, if Johan and I split up I wouldn't have a problem with him seeing the dogs. Like I wouldn't have a problem with coming up with some type of visitation agreement with him because these are his dogs too. Um, They're my dogs. I'm taking them with me because I'm the one that pays for them and everything, but I would have no problem with that. What I see is. Well, I'm trying to figure out. uh, I think it's harder to say that. Um. God forbid, unless you're in that situation. Right. Because it just depends on what caused the breakup. Well, no, that's why I say me and Johan. I think if Johan and I- But what caused the breakup? You have to think about that. 
but I, I, I can't speak to other people, but me and Johan individually, our I'm talking about y'all. No, I'm I know, but y'all. I'm saying like in our situation, I just don't see that we would break up over something bad. We've been together for so long that I think that if we broke up, it would just be because we're going separate ways. And so, you know, in that case, you know, I don't have a, a problem with it. I just think about the people who are young and getting puppies just like me and my girlfriend are going to go get a puppy and not thinking about, are you going to be in each other's lives for the next 10 years? And because if you're not, maybe you guys shouldn't get a puppy together. Maybe one of you guys should get a puppy because, because these dogs, and we know this, <clears throat> but because they have feelings and, you know, in our, when we interviewed your friend who is a pet sitter and dog walker, um, we know that our animals form bonds with these people in their lives. And for us to just suddenly this person vanishes, yes, the dog will recover, just like we all recover when, when a friendship ends or anything, but it's still very traumatic. And so why not um, try to keep that in mind, I guess, and create laws that remind people that this isn't a spur of the moment, I feel like a puppy, or I went somewhere and saw some cute puppies, so I got one situation that this is a serious um, legitimate, um, commitment that you're making. So when we, <clears throat> excuse me, when we talk about the, um, this new law in Spain and we look at it from a different perspective in terms of not so much being in the case of separation, I'm curious as to what other, um, benefits mm-hmm. pets have in these countries outside of just separation. Yeah. So you and Johan, Lee and I, nobody's going anywhere. Yeah. Um, so what, what's the benefit? Are we talking in terms of um, getting an apartment? Is that make it easier or um, a little less stressful, even down to deposits and things of that nature. I'd really like oh, to know the benefits. That would be an interesting, because I think that just regardless of the law, it housing doesn't change simply because <clears throat> if someone isn't responsible and doesn't train their dog, or maybe they did the best they could, but they just have a dog that has like severe separation anxiety, um, damage does happen. I mean, I know that, you know, children or humans can do damage too, but adding a pet to the situation, you know, ups the ante. So I'm, I'd be curious to know how that yeah. would make people change because it's sort of like the damage can still happen. You know, that doesn't saying that they're sentient beings doesn't mean that, um, they won't tear a, a sofa apart, but, um, but it's just sort of like, will that impact, you know, like instead of making someone pay a thousand dollar deposit, maybe they'll make them pay a $500 deposit and proof that they went through training class or, or something like that, or just a, a, what's it called? A, what, what is it called? A letter, you know, like when you, a recommendation letter from your last apartment to say, yeah, they had a dog here and it was perfectly great. I don't, you know, it'll be interesting to see. So, you know, of course I'm always typing. Um, I'm trying to find out why animals are considered property. This is almost like going through. I think it's because um, of the farm animals. I, I look at it as, you know, and if you think about dogs, dogs being pets, I mean, granted dogs have been our companions for thousands of years, but I don't know when dogs became pets and they didn't no longer had a job. Cause like my dogs don't have a job. They're all laying over there sleeping at the moment with occasional bouts of barking, but that's basically what they do on a day-to-day basis that and play. So, but in the past, you know, when we were working the land, if we had dogs, dogs were for keeping the, you know, the coyotes and wolves away. The dogs were for um, helping us round up the animals, you know, dogs were there for security. I mean, yeah, they were companionship too you know, but they all had a job. So I think in that case, you know, it's considered property. And because I know that dogs, someone stealing your dog here falls under theft of livestock, even though they're not livestock, but it's like people can't come on your property and steal. 
Well, you know, it, it's, it's like I said, it's like going down the rabbit hole. Um, because here's, a, here's an example, when you're looking at trying to figure out how animals differ from other types of property under the law. They mm -hmm. give this they give this example. Um, what happens if a dog is beaten to death? Mm -hmm. And for whatever reasons, prosecutors elect not to bring charges. You, the owner, cannot file a suit on behalf of your dog um, because they don't have meaningful legal rights under that current law. So I would be interested, just like the same laws, just basic care laws, mm -hmm. um, whether or not an animal can be considered a crime victim. Yeah, you know, I know, I know that. I mean, it's this is not the same with, of course, pets, but with canines. Um, if you kill a canine, you are charged with the same. You're treated the same as if you killed a, a human police officer. But yes. it'll, it would be interesting. To see. And I think, but I don't think that that's so much because they see the canines as sentient beings. I think it's because of the investment that went in to training um, the canine, which can be, a, you know, $100,000 and someone just killed, killed it. So I, I think that that is a big portion of that, even though I do know that I know people who are handlers and they are very much attached to their dogs. Um, but I think the law is because of the um, financial investment. Hmm. This is dark. I know. <laughs> so let's lighten it up right. about, about that coconut oil. <laughs> oh, what about them? Their eggs. I thought about that this morning as I broke up the parboiled egg for the dogs. And I yeah. was like, um, yeah, we spent a lot of time talking about, um, about eggs. So now, you know, the pandemic is, is starting to starting to lighten up a little bit. Mm -hmm. That would just be this week. Um, so I'm wondering now what will become of all of these pandemic pets what's your theory what's your thought well I know that we are seeing we last year we saw a lot of them land right back into the shelter my rescue group started getting calls like crazy from people who wanted to rehome their untrained dogs I mean that was a big problem people I mean I think that when you're sitting at home and you, you, sometimes you look to training when you notice that there's a problem but if you don't notice there was a problem you may not do the training or as much training as you really need to do. And then all of a sudden you have a big, big problem. And so, but yeah, we're seeing a lot of that. I, I'm hoping to see that start winding down because my hope is over the past two years, we've, sh you know, have shown the world that a lot of jobs can be done remotely. And so people don't have to spend all this time commuting back and forth to work. My daily commute was close to two hours, um, you know, an hour in the morning, an hour in the evening. Um, and I basically left home in the dark and I came home in the dark and I love being working from home. I'm able to get way more work accomplished when I'm at home. I don't have the distractions and I get to be surrounded by my dog. So I'm hoping other people are going to be able to continue working from home as well. But for the people who can't, and, you know, I think, you know, I think it's going to open up some opportunities for people because, mm -hmm. you know, people who are able to work from home, you know, kind of like have an at home daycare <laughs> for a couple of your friends, you don't have to have a full on business, but you know, if you have a dog that gets along with other dogs and a couple of your friends are finding that they have to go back to work and they can't leave their dog at home all day by themselves. Then they just drop them off at a friend's house for the day and three dogs get to play with each other. And, um, I don't know, it'll, it'll be interesting to see, but I'm hoping to see that people stop surrendering their dogs, that people's, you know, the, that, that part of the, um, you know, the whole, what is it? puppy pandemic or pandemic puppies mm -hmm. at the whole seat releasing or what is it surrendering their dogs I hope that's over I, I just hate that well the good news is for hmm. what I've been 
witnessing probably since I want to say the beginning of the year, um, interest in therapy work has increased. More and more people are calling saying, you know, I have this dog and she's 13 months old now. And we've decided that we want to get into therapy work, um, want to be part of the hospital therapy dog team. So a lot of people either got dogs during the, the beginning of the pandemic and now have bonded enough where they want to do something and give back or mm -hmm. people who have had dogs um, during the pandemic recognize how therapeutic their dogs were to yeah, them yeah. and want to now share that and take on, you know, this other bonding experience between them and their dog. So I know that there's been a big push here for um, more donations because mm -hmm. the shelters are starting to swell, but I'm not so sure that it has been so much so to the sense that it's due to the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Although a lot of editorials for magazines and newspapers seem to think that that's a, a, a catch story that works. Yeah. So, but I didn't know what your, what your take was. Yeah. I think it, it, you know, it, it pulls on the heartstrings and mm -hmm. it, you know, cause I mean, people don't want to think about a dog that got adopted into a family and was having a great life. And then all of a sudden one day was in a cage and his family's gone and doesn't understand what the hell just happened. Why am I here? you know, that is one of those things that it breaks my heart. And that's why I want to continue, you know, doing what I can. If I wanted, mm -hmm. I, if I, I would love to adopt another dog, but Johan's like, no, um, because he's mean and horrible and so cruel to me. But, um, you know, it's just like, I would love to help, but, you know, we could all do, we could only do what we can. I can, I just, ugh, I don't have anything to say after that. <laughs> did you just, did you just call this man cruel? Yeah. Well, cause he won't. I want, I got an opportunity to get a golden retriever puppy for free, purebred. That is my favorite breed. I actually think he felt really bad about it though, because I was just like, I really wanted that puppy and there's not, not going to be an, another opportunity for me to get something like that. I mean, that's not true. It's just a very rare opportunity. And so when did this happen? Um, uh, this past week. Oh, this is a new dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is a new hurt. It's a new pain. Okay. okay. <laughs> but I mean, I just, I, and I Since try not it's to. so new, I won't bother you. And I, I try not to be, I mean, I know it sounds harsh because I think that as a, you know, I've seen the memes go around that if you were a person that adopted a puppy and then surrendered your puppy, you're, you're a special kind of asshole. You know, those type of memes that go around some, you know what? Things happen. We all, you know, sometimes people bite off more than they can chew. Sometimes people's living circumstances change and they are not able to keep a dog. And it would be more cruel for them to keep the dog than to surrender to the dog and give the dog an opportunity to get a better life. I mean, there's just so many things. And so it's just like, I, I try to just keep my opinions to myself when it comes to speculating as to why someone has surrendered their dogs. I stay in the gray that. lane, stay in the gray yep. lane. <laughs> I just know in, in some cases it's because the dog proved to be too much. And we've seen this with, you know, Malinois when they got popular for a brief time, when Huskies got popular during Game of Thrones, you know, when um, I think there was a period of time when Chihuahuas were really popular, there was a Dalmatians were really popular. I mean, whenever a dog or a breed gets very, very popular, or just like one thing with my rescue, I, I've mentioned this in the past is we have rules with certain breeds. The only people who are eligible to adopt them are people who have that experience with that breed, because we see too often German shepherds and Huskies um, and other, you know, I don't, wanna, I don't want to, yeah, I don't, they're not difficult dogs. They're just very, um, they require a, a, a specific type of owner mm -hmm. and um, they're not, they're not, they're not a lap dog. And so, but I think that a lot of times people bite off more than they can chew. And I honestly believe that before I started this journey with my dogs, I would have done the same thing because I looked at it like, oh, that's such a gorgeous dog. I love it. And, mm -hmm. and never really thought about the challenges of a certain breed. Yeah. And what, what is involved, you know, um, 
the pandemic caused us to be isolated from um, a lot of the, the things that we got that positive energy from. Mm-hmm. Um, it created additional stress. And a dog was an instant degree of comfort for many different reasons. Mm-hmm. But now that you have the dog, and we're slowly being allowed to resume some of those activities around other human beings and, um, and whatnot. Now, what does that mean? Can you incorporate the dog or the pet back into your normal lifestyle? Or now do you find that the dog is um, not going to work for the world that you used to have that you're getting back? Mm-hmm. And I think that a lot of people didn't think about that because let's face it, when we started with all of this, there was no end game. There's no end game now. We just happened to, we, we're adjusted and we're living through it yeah, and with it. And so that's what we're learning how to do, but it's also giving us additional freedom at the same time. So I, I don't know what that means. Um, I'm just prayerful that a lot of these dogs don't end up back in shelters or just dropped off on mm-hmm. the side of the road. Yeah. So we don't see very many stray dogs here in Charleston. I don't know about you. No, we don't either. We don't. I mean, we're, that's why I love living where I live is because I live in an area that is very, very dog friendly. You know, we have dog friendly businesses, so you can take your dog to, to certain businesses. Um, and, everyone, everyone around here has a dog is responsible for dogs and is very good with dogs. I mean, yeah. I mean, we do have the, you know, the backyard readers and, and such, but they're not in this area that I know of there, but you know, we, I mean, I think that everyone's going to see that, um, in various areas around the country, some places more, more prevalent than other places, but for the most part, yeah, people are taking care of their animals. What, um, let me ask you this. You have All a right. cat. I do. I want to interview you about your cat. Okay. Then. His name right. is Cosmo. He's a hundred million years old. Okay. See, I think when somebody says, let me interview you, that means that I get to ask the questions. <laughs> um, but you know, if you want to go ahead and do this by yourself, <laughs> I'll just hang on and hope that some of my my questions get answered. <laughs> All right. And if you, Kimberly, about Cosmo, take two. <laughs> no. So is, is Cosmo an indoor cat or an outdoor cat? He's an indoor cat, but I do let okay. him go outside sometimes. Okay. So I'm, having, I'm struggling with the outdoor cat scenario um because we have one well we have two in our neighborhood that just live outside so they just live everywhere Mm -hmm. um my porch happens to be a room in their home called the great outdoors (laughs) um they uh how should i put this like, like they just all over. Are and the cat are the cat people about to come for us? <laughs> I just <laughs> shall we edit this out and stick with dogs? <laughs> <laughs> because you're being real careful all of a sudden <laughs> with your words. I guess I don't. I'm scared. I, no, I just I don't. I'm trying to understand why you have a pet, but the pet never comes in. Well, that's what I did is that um, I don't understand that. And so my, here's my, here's my biggest concern. Okay. okay? I can, I can deal with the cat hair on my cushions that I have to flip over and, and fluff, Mm -hmm. you know, to get the hair off when I want to sit on my own porch. Um, But here's the problem on any given day, I can open up the door and, you know, the dogs know to come out on the porch and we can hang out and what have you. But the cat's there. Of course, the cat darts. Mm-hmm. And I'm so afraid that, that your dog is going to dart after him into the street. Yes. Yep. Yes. 
Yeah. I don't know if there are any cat deterrents other than dogs. Um, but I do, I, I mean, I don't, I understand why people have outside cats. Cause if, if I could have an outside cat and it, and it, and it didn't kill him, um, I would, because uh, I don't like the litter box. I hate the litter box. I think it's disgusting. The litter box. And, um, so I would love it for my, to have an indoor outdoor cat, but, um, I just, it's not safe here because of the coyotes. So, um, I wouldn't feel safe for him, even though he did survive outside on his own for a week. Cause he got it. He got out. Johan left the door open and he got out. And but you didn't go looking for him. I looked for him every night. Couldn't find him anywhere. He was actually at a neighbor's house. Just hanging it's out there. They went inside. Got- no. They, he, he hung out outside and they went and got cat food and got cat dishes and were feeding them on the porch and stuff. And that's where he lived for a week. <laughs> and then he came home. Oh, so he had an Airbnb. Yeah, he did. He went on a vacation. He's like, I get a, I got a break. I need a break from them dogs. He went on a week long vacation and then came back. Oh my goodness. I was convinced he was dead and everything. I cried for him, all that. And then one day, um, the dogs were all looking out the window and I, I saw orange fluff and I was just like, what? Put the dogs outside and got them in the, got my cat in the house. And um, he's been in the house ever since. I, in the summertime, when it's nice out, I will take him outside. And I just, he's, the older he gets, the more he's like not really interested in being outside too long. Um, when he was younger, he, I could take him outside and I, all over the property and he would just wander and, and stuff. But now he just wants to be, he'll sniff around a little bit. And then he's just like, okay, yeah, let me back in the house. But yeah, I just worry about, um, I can see what, what your concern is. Um, I really wouldn't, I don't, I wonder if there is a way to like, that won't impact dogs, but would keep a cat, you know, you know, won't harm the cat, but just keep the cat from coming on the sofa or coming my, onto your porch. My sister-in-law, she hmm. puts, um, what did she tell me she does? Mothballs. She puts mothballs under the chairs. Mm. Do they just, they don't mm. like mothballs? I'm not a cat person. I don't know, but evidently, <laughs> evidently in her eyes, it's working. So she says, cause she's afraid of cats, but um, in her eyes it's working. But, you know, I don't know if, um, action Jackson would try to eat a mothball or not. So well, I don't, yeah. Cause it is toxic. I'm looking at yeah. this highly toxic, but you know what? I just wanted to go ahead and give a shout out. Can I give a shout out? Yes. I want to give a shout out to the make a wish foundation because as we were looking on online, guess what I came up with? Hmm. Make a wish did, um, puppy wishes from shelters Oh, for kids during the pandemic because kids couldn't travel. Uh-huh. So I think, you know, that, that that's worth a shout out to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Wait a minute. <clears throat> I don't understand. So you remember Make-A-Wish. You yeah. know what that is. All yeah. Right. I thought you, you were go like, to I thought Disney were World. Getting, I thought the puppies were getting wishes <laughs> when oh, you said hell. And that's why you went, oh. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, and you were going to do what? This is what we get crazy. I, I mean, it's you, were gonna, you were gonna get off, get off of this call, and start writing why Apollo needs to go to Disney World. Is that where you going? I don't know what was happening. No, Lisa says that I, mean, I that I, mean, I have difficulty explaining things, and I'm starting to believe him. No, the children who okay. were waiting for their Make a Wish trip to come mm-hmm. true during this period this pandemic period Mm -hmm. um what make a wish foundation decided to do was make a different kind of wish so because they couldn't go anywhere then you know kids were saying would you like a puppy and they were like yes so the make a wish was was taking shelter puppies and giving them to family oh okay that's nice that's nice no, it it lost something in the translation. I know, I because in my in my mind, I, I was just like, all these puppies are doing these things. Like maybe they took a group of dogs to the beach for the day. <laughs> no, no. But just like this conversation, true stories that I had this week. So um, 
to all of these people that are <laughs> in the therapy program. Well, whoops, now you know what's about to happen. So I got a phone call um, about bringing the dogs someplace, um, but it's a two hour ride and it's really, it's to benefit um, people and it's a, the right thing to do. Plus they're affiliated with the regional health center that I um, am employed by. So when I called transportation and he said, I'm not trying to be funny, but he said, do dogs like ride on the bus? Cause I said, can I have a, a small bus? And then we could just all motor up there together. And so I said, what do you mean? You don't know if they'll ride on the bus. I said, let me send you a picture from the Christmas parade. And, um, you know, they shuttled us from hospital to hospital. And so the picture I sent him had this, Doberman in the front seat with a Santa hat and behind them was a mini doodle with some elf ears. <laughs> and when he called me, he was just hysterical. He couldn't get it out. And he said, they were really on the bus. I said, yeah, they were on the bus. I said, it was inclement weather. We had to get from one hospital to the other. And your people were kind enough to shuttle us, you know, from the different hospitals. So he said, um, he said, oh yeah, I'll give you a bus. He said, hell, I'll drive, but I just want to see this. <laughs> I was like, like, okay, so we're going to go up there in May, but, um, but no, this was about the children. Okay. Okay. Uh, Not uh, the dogs. It was about the children. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Um, I, I just, I don't know with you. Sometimes. Just <laughs> I'm just dog minded. I'm dog focused. Yes, you are. And that's okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all right with that. Um, yeah, but that's about all I know that's happening. Um, but to wrap this up, I'm going to bring us back to allergies and say that I started giving Rodrigo a new allergy supplement from WinPro. And so I'm I'll, I'll update everybody on how it works and if it's effective. I mean, I yeah, don't please. think- I don't think it, um, I can't speak to how it would be, um, how it would help a dog that has severe allergies because I mean, there's so many supplements out there. And in my experience, <clears throat> I had people recommending all kinds of stuff for Rodrigo for his gut issues, but his mm -hmm. gut issues were at a level where a lot of that stuff, it, it may have worked like for a few days, but it wasn't a long-term solution. It was like, I had to, to um, I have to buy enzymes for him for the long-term solution. And so maybe these may not help dogs that are, have severe allergies. Mm -hmm. You don't know, I don't know, but his allergies are, he licks his paws until that little area between the toes gets super red. And sometimes he'll break the skin. Oh. Um, and so that's what he's doing with his allergies. It's just super intense paw licking. And so I'm, I, he started the new supplements today and I'm hoping to see uh, that go down. But another thing, and I know that this is going too long, but we can continue this on another weekend. I started adding fermented cod liver oil to my dog's diet. <laughs> Why must it be fermented? <laughs> I don't know. I just think fermented is good. And to be perfectly honest, you know, is because Billy is giving his dog fermented cod liver oil. He also drinks it himself and he gives it to his child. And I think his wife takes it as well. Who the uh, hell is Billy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so playing this for him. <laughs> this, this is a snippet I'm going to make. It's who the hell is Billy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you listen to this, Billy? <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know. Billy Hookman is, um, he was formerly with Answers Pet Food and he was, you know, he did a lot of the, um, he did all of them, the lives, and he did a lot of educational things. He would travel around the country from pet store to pet store to work with the store owners and employees to, you know, do events for their customers. He's been invited to speak at, um, all kinds of events. He's very, very knowledgeable about uh, dog nutrition, um, fermentation, uh, gut microbiome. And he's just, he's, he's pretty brilliant. He's currently with the company Green Juju that is here locally, but he actually um, <clears throat> lives in Pennsylvania. So now, yeah. now Green Juju, I can wrap my, <laughs> my, my arms around, but 
Yeah, man, you're going to have to get Billy on this on the podcast. <laughs> just because you say Billy Hookman, um, <laughs> his publicist is not doing a good job because I don't know who he is. And I would imagine that there's some other people out there. Hey, if you're listening, hashtag <laughs> us. Hashtag I know that would be like, who you the know hell Billy? is Billy? Okay. <laughs> and send Billy. that or send that to us or hashtag. <laughs> I stand with Billy if you know who he is. <laughs> but Billy Hoofman, yeah, he's he's a friend of mine. And so he's, I have he's nothing against Billy. Especially he's an amazing he's person. With- and actually, he's coming up here, I think, next week. We're going to dinner. So <laughs> he's a, well, he's, call me. He's call me when call me when when he shows up. He's a good friend of mine. <laughs> who the hell is Billy? Um, <laughs> hashtag that please please let's see all right right. before harley comes into the room i know look and see is he behind you he's He's just laying down he's laying down still all right he's sleeping yes we have to talk about that i really want to delve into the realm of seeing your dog your oldest dog is 12 right almost 12 yeah i really really want to get down and dirty into the senior dog stuff because it's um it's mind-boggling and i'm going to be very honest with you it's pretty frightening it's scary very scary to watch your dog age yeah um because the aging process in some aspects is pretty quick you know Mm -hmm. um so yeah we we really have to talk about that anybody um so are you gonna watch the super bowl tomorrow oh yes are you looking it is gonna be yeah it's like one of those where i'm no i'm watching the concert that's gonna have a a, a football game going on around oh snoop and mary j (laughs) black yes i am am. am looking so forward to it well look look they have a um robotic dog commercial oh oh yeah it's a 60 second commercial about some futuristic robo dog um so look for that yeah okay the dog doesn't die kimberly you can handle that no i need these dogs okay i think it's weird so all right well i'm gonna go feed my dogs and then um come back i found concentrated pineapple juice in the grocery store oh Yes, in a jar. Ooh, Concentrated. I haven't, I haven't seen that in a long time. 100% pineapple juice. I'm not talking about dole in the can. Yeah, I know. I know what you're talking about. I mean, about. you could see the concentration of mm-hmm. the pineapple juice at the bottom. Mm-hmm. So I quickly ran to the liquor store and bought some Bacardi rum and I'm yep. going to make my own oh, oh, yep. <laughs> uh, pina coladas <laughs> with some vanilla ice cream. <laughs> yes. Yes, I may even sprinkle some of the dog's cocoa therapy um, <laughs> coconut flakes on top to make it really good. But that's my Saturday. If you do that, you got to post it on Insta. All right, I shall do that. <laughs> I shall do that. All right. Okay, listen, talk to you later, baby. Hope Bye. you feel better. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>